Iron Maid is a Vampire by Dennis the Menace, read by Deathlight, Chapter 2, Thicker Than Water. A round table. No, not like the Knights of the Round Table. More like the Mayors of the Round Table. <laughs> get it? We're both mayors and we're sitting... <sighs> Shut up. Vinyl? She shifted her head slightly, looking up from her sheet music. I hoped to catch a glimpse of her eyes, as her shades had been slipping down the bridge of her nose, but she pushed it up with her hoof when she caught me staring. Drat! She spat the pencil she had been chewing on for the past hour or so out, and set it down on the table. <sighs> Yuck! So unrefined, so uncouth. Quill's a much better vinyl. There's a certain elegance, flourish to using ink. But how do you erase? Hush, vinyl, you wouldn't understand. Ya yeah, Octi? Octi, it was never Octavia, always Octi. The first time we met, she called me Octi, trying to find out my name. Trying to get Vinyl Scratch to stop calling me, that was like trying to get Vinyl Scratch to do anything. Uh... This was stupid, the idea seemed like a good one at the time, but then again, all my ideas sound good in my head. What? Vinyl pushed her sunglasses up again. Come on. Her voice was low and husky, at the same time, scratchy and rough. Masculine, almost. Her vocabulary was juvenile, consisting mostly of slang. I spoke with a more refined accent, articulating every word. The first conversation we had was mostly me asking her to repeat herself because I didn't understand a word that came out of her mouth. Never mind, I waved my hoof dismissively. Now she was interested, she leaned forward on her cushion. Tell me. I shook my head. No, it's alright, really, I was going to ask me something, and now you're going to tell me. Vinyl finished. I sucked in, taking a deep breath before bursting it all out. Do you believe in vampires? An instant question. I cringed, waiting for her reaction. I heard a point and laugh. Instead, Vinyl said nothing. Not once did she even break into that insufferable grin. A faint smile tugged at her lips. I do. I started. Really? Yeah, why'd you ask? No reason. She arched an eyebrow. Oh, I get it. You've been reading that book, haven't you? It's nothing like that. Lies, all lies. I've been telling lies to myself and her. Ah, oh, the Kennelot Concert Hall. Chandelier sweeping red carpets, mass enough to sit all of Ponyville. I was grateful to be back in Canterlot. The great thing about living there was that there was always an opportunity to listen to music. I thought it'd be a great place to take vinyl for a night out. How wrong I was. Fun fact, did you know that Vinyl Scratch sounded like a motorboat when she snored? I bet she didn't. The acoustics were great in there for every pony in the hall to hear her snoring. Definitely worth all the bits I paid for to listen to some fine classical music in the hall. Oh, oh good, good, she's, she's awake. awake. What's, What's that? that? Oh, Luna's sake, sake, that's, that's not, not pop. pop. Yes, yes, yes it, it is popcorn. popcorn. Oh, she, she wouldn't know. She, she she just ate some. Now, now she's smearing butter everywhere. And now she's slipping soda. Why did the music stop? stop? And why, why is her pony glaring, glaring at me? And why are you throwing your instruments at me? You're not mad at me, are you? Oh, dear, dear, Vinyl Scratch. I couldn't possibly be mad at you. I was furious. And may I say, it was an honor and a privilege to have the entirety of Canterlot nobility focusing their attention on me. Me of all the dumb, oh so very dumb luck. <laughs> of all the ponies in Equestria, I had the good misfortune of being subjected to their furious gazes. I felt like an egg being cracked over a frying pan on a stove ablaze with a grease fire, with the egg's yolk having not survived the drop and more gasoline being poured onto dust of flames. If that makes no sense to you, it doesn't. Octi, you okay? Hey, Octi! And why, you may ask, I was bestowed with such a great honor? I was trying to figure out myself, starting by choking the life out of a certain nincompoop. <laughs> I'm gonna find a way to legally murder you! I giggled with a manic grin spread across my face as I wrapped my hose around her neck. She gasped, Killing me won't solve anything! And then after I legally murder you, I'm gonna do not so many nice things to your corpse, so there won't be any evidence left. <laughs> I cackled, shaking her around. Octi, I'm sorry! No, you're not. You're not sorry because if you were sorry, you wouldn't have brought popcorn and drinks. And snored when they started playing. I let her go, sighing. 
I need a drink. She said nothing, pulling me along. It was like that for a while, just us walking together to our favorite watering hole. Being a Candlelight native, I knew these streets like the back of my face. Octavia? I almost turned my head in shock of hearing my actual name coming from her mouth. No, no, I'm not going to look at you right now. Octavia, please. No, I'm being mad at you right now. Can't you see I'm not looking at you? That means I'm mad. I'm really, really sorry. Well, here we are anyways. I harumphed and turned away from the unicorn subtly, climbing up the last few steps to open the door for her. It was a little hole in the wall, out of sight, out of mind kind of place as compared to the rest of the grand capital city. Most plenty saw a kind of lot from their postcard or from a view of the countryside. It was small and cramped, and there was most definitely a bar of some sort with the creaky stools and torn cushions. The bartender seemed to brighten as he saw us. I'll have some sparkling water, and for my friend, a bloody Mary, Vinyl grinned. Extra blood. The bartender chuckled. I merely stared at her with my jaw gaped. She's a vampire. Octavia, Bloody Mary is a drink. She's a vampire. It's a cocktail. The blood is tomato juice. She's a vampire. My mind was made up. Maybe I'd finally snapped. Maybe I'd lost it. I'd been living with her for so long. Just being around her guaranteed some sort of mental deterioration. I sighed and with one mighty swig, I'd done my entire drink. She isn't a vampire, just me being a silly filly over analyzing every little coincidence. Feel better? I glanced over to see her, a red mustache on her lip. I giggled and pointed. It was hard to stay mad at her. You go on ahead. I gotta run an errand. At one in the morning? I cocked my head. Just a quick stop. Then I'll come with you. No! She sighed. I mean, this is something I have to do by myself. Very suspicious, very irregular, even for her. Alright then, if you insist, I'll see you later. I decided I was going to spy on her. Not in that creepy way, mind you. I wasn't a stalker, but then again, that depends on your interpretation of the word. She waved and waited until I turned the corner and started trotting away. I silently ran around to the other side of the street and spotted her again. My heart was racing with excitement. She crossed the street and I followed her trying my best to stay hidden and insuspicious to any bystanders. While the streets of Cadillac were desolate at this hour, there were always a few stragglers. Where are you going? I whispered, poking my head up before squeaking. She had turned around, her head darting back and forth. I held my breath and listened for the sound of her clapping to grow fainter before moving on. Cadillac Hospital? Somehow it felt like I was walking into a trap. I felt guilty, like I was ready to be caught. Cadillac Hospital, one of the best hospitals in Equestria, Second only to the princess's own personal hospital inside the castle. Why did Vinyl need to go to the hospital? She was fit as a fiddle. Any closer I would have been found out. I resigned myself to watching her walk past the door inside, slumping down against the brick wall. Perhaps she was getting a checkup. At one in the morning? That didn't make any sense. I bit my lip and trotted back to our apartment, mollifying over the ramifications of what I have seen. I hurled myself into my bed with a heavy sigh. How did I ever get involved with her? Six, Six months, months ago, Manhattan, cloudy gray skies, skies hard rain, downpour almost, and then there was me, stuck inside some pub, sipping away at some sparkling water while listening to some blues on the jukebox. Not sad or anything fancy like that. My mind wandered to that strange mare I had met with the electric blue mane and pale coat. I didn't know where I was going that day or why I had left the apartment. I just put on my scarf and wandered aimlessly until I found myself in that nightclub. It pounded your rhythm and enough flashing lights to give me epilepsy. Music I couldn't stand. I'd probably never see her again. How wrong I was on that fateful day. I'm a good girl, honest. Certainly not the type to get mixed up with the wrong crowd. This scene, however, I attracted all kinds of attention, and not of the good kind, from a bunch of rowdy stylists who had too much money to blow on too much cider. I was in too much of days to remember their faces, their coats, or the manes, anything like that. I couldn't even remember what they said to me. All I remember was her vinyl scratch coming to my rescue. Thanks, I said quietly, vinyl scratch. Octi, my bear! She shook my hoof. Good to see ya! There was something that attracted me to her, in a friendly way. Her charisma, something like that? Living with Vinyl Scratch was like living with a friendly manticore who had no concept of personal space or hygiene. 
She was an absolute slob. I didn't dare venture into the pit of tartars known as her room, though I had gotten a peek. Energy drinks everywhere. Glow sticks hanging from the ceiling, records on the wall. She had her days, though, and I wake up pleasantly surprised to find her washing the dishes. She's great, right? A roommate who washes the dishes. Morning. Good morning, Vinyl. Did you finish your errand? Oh, uh, oh, yeah. A pause. So what was it, I asked. Uh, I just had to pick up a few cables and cords for my set, DJing stuff. I bit my lip and studied her, boring my eyes into hers, hidden behind those shades. Something wrong? I shook my head. Nothing. Can I see the list of ponies who visited last night? The mayor at the front desk looked at me wearily. Sure. Name? Final scratch. She scanned the list. Ah, yes. She had an appointment with the Candelot Hematology branch. Hematology? Pretty much anything having to do with the study of blood. Blood? Does it say why she had an appointment? Sorry, no. That's confidential. I groaned. Is there a blood bank or something around here? She blinked. Why, yes. We offer our services year-round. Would you like to donate some? The very thought of it made me queasy. No, thank you. I had no hard evidence to prove that she was a vampire. All of it was confidential. I had reached a dead end. Why would she visit that branch of the hospital? Why would she visit a hospital at all? All of it was very fishy. I was going to have to do a little bit more digging if I was going to see this through. Hello, everybody, and if you were listening, there was a different voice here besides me. Um, yeah, that was my mom recording that nurse, so... Yeah, it was really nice for her to help me with that. Well, not really much to say, except my brother's playing a video game out there right now, so... Yeah. So, see y'all next time, and I'm... I don't know if I might be a bit late on the next update, so bye.